Aloha and welcome to A Word with Ward. I'm Representative Gene Ward and I have the honor of representing the people from Kalama Valley to Hawaii Kai. And we are presently in a series of interviewing community leaders and community organizations. Today we have the honor of having the Hawaii Kai Lions Club joining us. We have the president, Tom Jones. Tom, welcome. Thank you for having we us. We have past president, Scott Takara, is Sakata. it? Sakata. Sakata. And third vice president, Peggy Oyama. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Every community has lions, and they always have these classic yellow shirts. <laughs> or is that Hawaii Kai? Or is this all over the world that comes? Tom, what, what, what? you guys look really bright. I mean, I know you're bright. <laughs> you look really bright. What's we the like, history of that? We like to stand out in a crowd. Um, this, is the, this is a typical uh, you know, lion's vest. We wear these at conventions, um, sometimes on work projects, uh, so that people recognize us and can see you know, our logo. On the back, we'll have our club name. And that kind of makes us stand out in the, in the crowd so people can recognize us. This happens to be our club shirt. Uh, so th this is a, a, a oh. shirt that's unique to our club. Oh and it says Hawaii Kai Lions on there. Okay. And Scott's wearing a oh, typical work shirt for our work so project. So the yellow is the generic anywhere in the world Lions. And Correct. then specific to Hawaii Kai is, is that one. That, yeah. that, that's a unique identity marker. Yeah, yellow, purple, or But what about for people who may know or have seen lions but they don't know too much about it what are some of the things that people should know about lions well lions club has been around since uh, 1917 it was founded by a gentleman uh, businessman business leader melvin jones and uh, it started off as a community service organization for business uh, men and then uh, at one of the early conventions helen keller uh, challenged she was their guest speaker and she challenged the lions to uh, become knights of the blind and so uh, they took her up on her challenge. And so ever since, one of our primary focuses of our community service is to work on uh, sight and vision issues. So we work with uh, the organ donor, the eye bank. Um, mm. We uh, fight you know, diabetes. We have projects along those lines. So if it's vision related, uh, we do projects like that, including uh, in the local schools. We do vision and hearing screenings for the uh, elementary school children to, to try to find uh, children who might have potential problems as they're growing up and identify them early. Tell me, you're the new president. Scott is the past president. Mm -hmm. Scott, what were some of the projects that you had while you were president? Well, every year we pretty much have the same schedule uh, with the school year starting. Again, as Tom mentioned, we do the vision and hearing screening for preschools and elementary schools. And it's also being done uh, around the island um, to test the kids. Um, we also do other community service uh, projects whenever certain organizations need volunteers to help and then we're, we're there to provide manpower and support. Some of the things that come to mind is the the yellow shirts keeping the Hawaii Kai Christmas Parade moving and keeping going. You guys do a great job on that. You know, logistically that must be really, really something that, I mean, it's, it's quite an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a lot of hard work. Um, the lion who's been taking care of it last few years, Ken, um, it, it is. It's logistically um, because it's the whole community. We need the police department. Um, mm. Need to make sure everyone's there. There's a lot of different groups around the island. We also have a couple, one or two maybe, um, bands that would come from the mainland to participate. Mm. And the community really looks forward to it mm. every year. So it's, it's a really, really great, um, I think, event for the community. And it's awesome because the whole community participates. Right being the Hawaii Kai Lions, that's one of the great benefits is we get a lot of the daycare centers, the schools, the community centers, Coco Marina, we get all kinds of uh, participation within the community, such as yourself, which we're happy <laughs> yeah, that yeah, Which is exactly why I invited you guys, because this is a series of interviewing and thanking people who contribute to the community, and you guys certainly are a standing, outstanding member of the community. And members of the community, as you live in the community, people maybe want to know, well, Who's a lion? Who can become a lion? If somebody's watching, they say, well, gee, you know, I've always wondered how I could become a lion. What's the qualifications? And is membership, obviously, it's mixed gender and everything. What's kind of like the typical description of who's a, who's a lion person? Anybody who wants to volunteer and contribute back to their community. So it's open and it's it's pretty much open. We, no secret handshake. No, <laughs> no, we, no, no, no secret handshake. We can't show you on TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Just uh, kidding. yeah, it, it pretty much is open. We have uh, our, our website is uh, hawaiikailions.org, mm -hmm. and uh, you can find out about our club there and contacts if people are interested in joining our club. Or there are clubs all over the island of Oahu and all over the state and all over the country and all over the world. So it's you know the the, the local clubs really service their 
the yeah. local community uh, with projects like in our neighborhood. We do the schools. We, we do a lot of different projects right in our neighborhood. But we also uh, join up with clubs all the way up as far as uh, Diamond Head and Kaimu Key. They're in our zone. We do you know joint projects with them, like division screening at, at some of the local schools. And then we have district-wide projects, like we assist with the Aloha Run or projects of those natures. and mm -hmm. and. Um, so we'll, we'll team up with all the clubs and do a statewide project as well. So we do a lot of different projects, small, medium, and, and large regions. But anybody you know who's interested to join can, can contact a, a so You don't have to be a business person then? No, 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 you don't. And, and um, you don't have to be Helen Keller. I mean, you, you don't have, have to, to be, be a mind. social no. worker. A so. descendant. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> One of the key things is that um, back in the day, people thought it was just for older retired people, but it's it's actually uh, for men, women. We have family memberships. Mm -hmm. We're really pushing to get more women to join the Lions Clubs. Mm -hmm. Also, the fa mm -hmm. with the family membership, the benefit is if, uh, for example, we're doing an environmental project, you could come out with your kids, and if you're in, in a family, then it would work out as a family bonding opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. So we're really encouraging um, couples, um, women, and families so to join. So what would you say to the women who may be watching to, uh, I, I would ask them to look at the lines because one of the benefits I found is I work full time and I have a lot of uh, other activities going on. But the thing I like about the lions is they say, um, "Come out to our projects." And when I can make it, I can. Mm -hmm. And the benefit is because of the diversity of the projects, I'm able to go to whichever one appeals to me as mm -hmm. well because I'm big on the diabetes stuff, for right. example. Peggy, could we tell people what your background is? Uh, yes. <laughs> like, um, you are a in oh. intellectual proprietary okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. protection uh, service? Or? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, uh, I work for Hewlett Packard Company as an intellectual property paralegal. And one of the benefits I've found is that Hewlett Packard also allows um, employees to take four hours a month to do volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And that's on mm -hmm. company time. Mm -hmm. So when I came back is to Hawaii, right? I was able to say, hey, what can I do? And the Lions fit the bill for me. Does that local restaurant, Gyotaku, have that same policy? <laughs> or, 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 wait a minute, you're <laughs> Gyotaku. <laughs> you, I am Gyotaku. You're Gyotaku. G I never heard of... Well, I have business partners, and they allow me to go out and work oh, on okay. large projects, too. Uh, absolutely. Um, but uh, community service is important, and you got to ha really have to give back. And so I've been very fortunate, you know, in, in my business dealings in Hawaii, we're supported by the community. And so it's my opportunity to, to, to give back to the community by, by serving... I've been in the club for 20 years in Hawaii. 20 years. 20 He's years. celebrating 20 years wow. this yeah. year. This year I'm a 20-year member. Peggy, how long have you been? Three years. I just joined. You're still so. fresh. Scott? Yes. Yeah, four years. Four one, years. One, Scott, one, what, what is your background? What do you bring to alliances in case there's other, quote, uh, real Oh, I'm like, I think I'm one of, if not the youngest yeah. member yeah. in the club. Yeah. yeah. And for me personally, Peggy touched upon it. it it's volunteer. I was looking for right. an organization to, uh, you know, help in the community as something I wanted to do. Uh, my sponsor actually, Stan Ito, called me out of the blue. Mm. And um, so I came to a couple of meetings and joined. And yeah, the, the, the club has been in the islands for many years and there's many, many um, old time members. And I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but mm. a lot of people don't know what the Lions do. Mm. They all think, and I'm not saying this in a bad way, it's not, they're like, well, it's, we just thought it was like a bunch of old men. <laughs> and, but unfortunately, <laughs> Those true members, they you know, when they joined years ago, they're still a member. Mm -hmm. And for us to do community projects, some of it is physical. Mm -hmm. And for our club, the majority of the members are past the retirement age, so it's it can be a challenge mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. um, to find people my age or Peggy's age to join. It's a challenge too because now these people with families and kids, there's so much so other busy, activities yeah. going yeah. on. Yeah, so. Busy. so um, for, for people my age to join and find time actually to join, mm -hmm. that can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Although we're looking for more volunteers, mm -hmm. um, that's a big help, but also we are an organization and we do have meetings twice a month and we mm -hmm. do run it like a business too. And mm -hmm. so we're trying to look for new members. Twice mm -hmm. a month uh, meetings. What right. do you do during the meetings? Well, we have uh, four business meetings a year. The first meeting of each quarter, we meet, our, our club meets the first and third Thursdays of each month. Uh, and then we have on our on the first meeting of the quarter is a business meeting. So we, we talk about money and our finances and our fundraising and and those type of things. And our budget, uh, do strategic planning for projects and things that we're going to do. Uh, and then the rest of the meetings are, are typical. We'll have a speaker come in. Uh, we might have somebody like yourself come and tell about what's happening in the community, or we have somebody come to talk to us about rail. We have. People come and talk about health issues, senior health care, um, how we're going to take care of our aging parents, or uh, what we can do to keep ourselves healthy, vision issues, uh, all kinds of things. And so, you know, we have a, a, a inexpensive meal together. 
a little fellowship, uh, enjoy some some information from a speaker, and uh, you know pass around project you know worksheets, and that, then we ha usually have about two or three projects a month, uh, and so it's really it's really not that much of a of a commitment. And the new family program that Peggy mentioned you know allows the you know if you have family issues you can actually bring your whole family to some of these projects, but not to the meetings to the projects right to the not projects to, not to the meetings right but and. Our, but one of our tenets, though, is family first, business second, lions third. So, mm. you know, we have our perspectives. We want to make sure that we take care of our families. We have, you know, that we're, our businesses are running, you know, smoothly. And then in the spare time that we have, that's when we can volunteer and mm. do things. So it's, it's... I understand there's a reminder, uh, oath, or no, a pledge. A pledge. That, that uh, you say at the meetings or you, s you say it while you're jogging or... <laughs> like like a, I don't know if you've been to a, a Cub Scout meeting or a Boy Scout meeting. They start off with a flag ceremony yes, and all that. Yes. We our our Lions Club does that. That's I, I'm not sure if all clubs do, but our club certainly does. We start yes. off with the, the flag pledge, and then we have the Lions pledge. Sing, you know. Well, what uh, does it Patriot sound like? The the patriotic song or the. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is you're a grand old flag, but yeah. um, no, it's the, the, our pledge is I pledge allegiance to my country and to the cause of peace throughout the world. I believe in the principles of lionism as contained in the Lions Code of Ethics. I am proud to be a lion dedicated to the service of others. And that pledge was actually written by uh, a, a Hawaii lion, um, I think in 1974, uh, and it became, it was adopted by you know, Lions Club International to become mm -hmm. the Lions Pledge for, for all lions throughout the world. Hawaii has actually contributed a lot to Hawaiians um, uh, to Lions Club you know, International in, I think it was 1927, there was a, a service club in Hawaii called the Pan Pacific Club, and its secretary's name was, I'll say, I think it's Colbert, or maybe Colbert, I'm not quite sure, but his name was uh, Colbert Kurokawa, and he was the secretary of the club. He lobbied Lions International to remove their whites-only restriction from their constitution and bylaws, and in doing so, uh, the Lions Club, the Pan Pacific Club, became the first multiracial Lions Club in the world at that time. So Hawaii has made a lot of contributions to Lionism uh, going back as far as 1927. It's a very specific thing that a lot of people probably wouldn't know about, but that's right. one of those lines in the sand that, you know, Hawaii was, was the leader. We are leaders I in I mean, we're the ways. future of the world. I mean, right. this is what the world's going to look like in the future. Mm -hmm. Nobody's yeah. going to be a majority. Everybody's going to be, uh, be a minority. <laughs> Let's flash f fa fast forward to Father's Day this year. A lot of people in Hawaii Kai yeah. know Kaiser High School and Father's Day are synonymous to the Lions Club. What do you guys do? How do you do it? Do you make any money? How can you give so much so cheaply, which is so good? I'm talking about the pancake breakfast you guys <laughs> And the, the chief, chief chef right here. <laughs> oh, is he yeah, the chief yeah, chef yeah. also? I, I, I bring my culinary skills to bear in, in, the, Lions, <laughs> in the Lions Club. Um, in fact, when I joined the Lions, I was actually mowing my lawn one day, and my neighbors had told me that um, when the Lions Club comes around selling tickets to the pancake breakfast, Buy, you know, buy some tickets because we all go together. I live in a cul-de-sac, not, you know, at that time I lived in a cul-de-sac, not far from Kaiser High School. And so uh, Toshi, you know, Lion Toshi Nishioka came by one day, he was selling tickets, and he recognized that I was new in the neighborhood because he sold there all the time, and the, the you know, the previous um, residents were not there. And so we got to talk, and he asked me what I did. And at that time, I was general manager for uh, Kyotaru and Colombian restaurants. And he said, oh, Colombian, you know how to make pancakes, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, I do. And I bought some tickets, but as it turned out, I didn't get to use them because I was in the kitchen that year making pancakes. Well, you pulled, pulled you right in straight away. Right into the club, but it was, I will tell you that as a food service professional, my first experience with Lions was volunteering to help with their breakfast. So I went on Saturday and prepped, and I went on Sunday and served um, you know, pancakes with them. And I was so impressed with the level of organization, camaraderie, and skill, and the product that they put together. I was just absolutely overwhelmed by their, the, the quality product that they did and how much fun they had doing it. So when they asked me to join the club, I was right in there, and, and I've been, I haven't missed a breakfast yet. It was my 20th breakfast this year. Wow. So the success of Gyotaku relates directly <laughs> to <laughs> your lionism. I think it's the other way around. <laughs> I think the <laughs> benefits from my culinary skills, but in any event, yes, absolutely. What are the ball scores for the uh, the pancake breakfast? It's getting bigger, it's getting... It how many people, how many members of the community show this up? This year? Did you guys take well, a head count? About 3,500. Approximately. Yeah. Three, That's how many feeding. tickets, breakfast we sell. That's how many breakfasts we, we sell. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it ranges anywhere from 3,200 to yeah. 3,400. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, it's a big community event. It's our main fundraising project. 
and the monies we receive is what we use to give back to the communities. Right. We support all the, the schools, the elementary schools in Hawaii Kai, high school, the uh, intermediate schools, and other uh, the organizations. The library and yeah, scholarships. Library. So what's the date of the next Pancake Breakfast? Father's Day. <laughs> Which <laughs> is June. always? About June 20th or June. somewhere yeah. around there. Okay. It's, the third, it's the third Sunday in June every year. Next year. Third Sunday right. in June. And the price is? I think it was $6 this year. $6. Right. So Inflation might, might have to go up for six fifty next year. I don't know. Yeah, we'll yeah. I was talking to a yeah. restaurant yeah. the other day. Oh, Food prices costs are, are just going. Right. No, but we, got, we, we need to thank all of the, the supporters. I mean, right. we get all the, yes. the, the foods from the suppliers. Right. We get volunteers uh, to come out and help us out. Yep. We have uh, uh, donations help us along the way, too. Mm. We do have to pay for a good bunch of the food, but there are mm. a lot of groups that, that help us out and uh, can make their contributions as well. And mm. everybody should know that, you know, to be lions, we pay dues every year. It's not, not a, an awful lot of money, but we do pay dues, and we have our own, um, you know, um, admin fund that we do, but all of the proceeds that come from, from the breakfast, after we pay for the food and the, you know, the use of the school and things like that, mm. uh, all, all of that money, 100% of it goes back to the community through our projects, our donations, scholarships, uh, you know, the things that we do donations there. Donations so, to yeah. the library. In fact, right. let's go back to the community. Earlier you mentioned twice the vision and the hearing test. Mm -hmm. What actually, I mean, with your backgrounds, obviously, you guys are not the ones who do the hearing and the vision test. There's How training. There's training. training. There's training. Yeah. Yeah. But it's simple. The, the, smart, I think the vision is real simple, right? It's right. just, you know, oh, so for they, the children, yeah. yeah. Okay. And they're, you're just testing their left and right eye. And I believe the hearing, there's that machine we use. Mm -hmm. So, so what grades would you be and what school? Preschool for the vision. Preschool for vision mm -hmm. and then uh, both vision and hearing, hearing in the elementary, elementary levels. School. Depends, two, second, third mm -hmm. grades in there. Yeah. So there's no one in Hawaii Kai who doesn't get screened by the Lions? Well, if they miss school that day, they or might. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean it's... But we yes. do, yeah, we do. And, and there is a big push to do it across the island. Right. The we, we have a lot of our own equipment in our club and also to our zone has extra equipment to do this and we're all trained and then we go to mm. the schools and and uh, and do this year and it's you know it's out of, out of you know maybe a you know a thousand students or 500 students you might only find you know two or three a small percentage that that have potentially a problem but it's so important to identify mm. that Catching at an early age early. Them, absolutely and so that's a very rewarding you know experience it's, it's unfortunate to find it but it's rewarding to find it early and potentially you know find you know what would you do when you find something uh, you know two out of a hundred or two out of a thousand uh, whatever the numbers were what would you then give your reports to right. the, the, the DOE to a physician to the, pa to the, well, parents, the parents the parents get to a the parents right the, the, the parents get a notification that they're you know they should have their their child see an eye doctor or hearing doctor or mm -hmm. what have you and then they can go get follow-up on there um, so you know in not all cases it's serious but in some cases it is and and it's very you know very important to find those things early so that's why we do it at the elementary and preschool level. Mm -hmm. Are there any upcoming projects that people should know about, or is it st every year Hawaii Kai is particularly the parade, the... No, we have projects all the time. The, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like right now, the school st school year started, so right. the majority of the projects are the vision and hearing screening. Right. Um, I mean, November's coming up soon, and that's when we have our holiday parade, so it's only in a couple months. And, right. yeah, and then later this month, we're working with the Friends of Hanama Bay at Hanama Bay, and we'll be collecting trash. Right. They do that every quarter, and we've been participating with them as well. Right. And so. district right, we have the White Cane Walk. Yes, and this coming up. Saturday, we have a uh, uh, Hawaii Lions Foundation Walk at Alamana Beach Park on the 18th. Uh, on the 18th, so we've got a lot of a lot of projects come up. Those are those are uh, state statewide projects. The White as well. Cane Walk. You want to yes. add a little detail on that? It's a, it's a walk for the blind, and so. Um, People who are, you know, uh, vision impaired of all of all levels come out and walk, and lions walk with them, and then you make a donation, and there's a walk, and then mm -hmm. the funds go to uh, various vision, you know, projects. And the walk have. starts at the legislature. Right, actually, right here. Yeah, <laughs> it's coming up this month. So you guys took the Helen Keller challenge Very seriously mm -hmm. decades ago because, as she challenged the visual and the hearing, she, what, what, say what again? What Helen Keller? She said? asked us to become the Knights of the Blind. And that's what we pretty much have done. We do a lot of community service, but a big focus, our major focus, primary focus, is working on vision issues. We also and have collection there. boxes around town. For, like the glasses. For example, yeah, collecting glasses. old and the used glasses. And but what, we, do you, what, what, what are the used glasses? They clean them, and then they send them either to third world countries, mm -hmm. or they just go back to refurbish them. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. For example, right now, Jim Bryan is in Afghanistan, and that's what they're doing. They're handing out refurbished glasses. Right. Yeah, let's go to the international for a, mm -hmm. for a, okay. a bit here. Uh, he's doing what in Afghanistan? Jim Bryan is working with them um, as a representative for the Lions for the state of Hawaii, mm -hmm. and then we also have a friend who's with um, the Rotary, and together they go to Afghanistan, and they 
drive around in little vehicles <laughs> and they have boxes and they Bad go up. into a room and hand out classes yeah. to people and they do the school vision testing as they're the doing kids, it. Yeah. School so, yeah. And it's of course that great peril to their lives as well right. too, but yeah. that's their goal. So though. there is cooperation with the Rotary. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. So I can let you know that I'm a Rotarian. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I was thinking about asking uh, you to become a liar. <laughs> <laughs> there's no okay. limit to how much volunteers can do together. So, yeah. absolutely. But it's the same notion, service above self. Absolutely. Yes. And absolutely. the big overseas is the uh, polio, polio yeah. plus. Same. Yes. Okay, enough already mm. stamping out in the world. But it's yeah. good to see that Lions and, and Rotary are working together. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, are there international things other than what's going on in Afghanistan, eyeglasses, anything on? What, what, what's could, the state of the art of hearing in America or overseas? Is, is it? We're, we're having less diseases for hearing and eyes, or are we getting more blind and it's serious? You know, like diabetes is going all over the place. It's, That's the major it's driver of blind, uh, very blind serious. issues. Autism is going, is eyesight in America getting better or worse? Or what, what's sort of the state of the art as you guys have measured this or at least participated in it over the years? Yeah, I don't know about going that deep, but again, we're just going to the schools to uh, mm -hmm. try and catch it early. Um, and that's for us, our focus is just the, the, young, the and, young children. Mm -hmm. And then we can also add that there are, um, there are people in different Lions Clubs, such as um, Manoa Waioli Lions mm -hmm. Club. They had a doctor who went to Africa and she was doing vision testing and doing um, work in, in um, concert with, um, I think, lens crafters. Or so. so there mm -hmm. are people who are mm -hmm. Lions who are dedicated to do service and then they're going internationally mm -hmm. to provide the benefits I'm of them. My good colleague, uh, Representative David Stegmaier, was uh, right. yes. he was a member of our club. He was, our club. He was a member of your he club. Of our club. He always reminded me of all the things that Lions were doing. This is the most formal conversation right. I've ever had with Lions, particularly Hawaii Kai Lions, uh -huh. other than David saying, "You know, I got a Lions meeting. Hey, come on and have, you know, the yeah. uh, Father's Day and the other events that are going on." Yeah. And Gene, I would like to add, we really want to thank the Hawaii Kai community in particular mm. for their support of our pancake breakfast mm. because without the community support, right. people who buy tickets from us year after year, mm -hmm. we come knocking on their doors. If the community didn't support us, then we wouldn't be able to carry That's on. Right. So you can thanks. look right in that camera and you can tell <laughs> them right in the eye. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we know we really do count on the community. They're great to support us. And it's a it's a good event. If you had three thousand last year, is it every year it gets bigger and bigger? Well, because it's pretty it's consistent. Instant. Yeah. Is and it? with the downturn in the economy, we have right. to consider that as well. Be right. um, uh. On the one hand, we say people can't afford to eat out, but then on the other hand, it's a very good value, and for a family, right. the kids could buy mm. dad a Father's Day breakfast mm -hmm. and come on down mm -hmm. and have a good time. But the next event, as you said, is the Christmas parade coming yeah, up. Uh, what should people know about the Christmas parade? It's time always, events. It's always they, a Saturday after Thanksgiving. Sa the Saturday, first right. Saturday after, after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, yes. yeah. Right. Okay, so the first Saturday after so Thanksgiving. The yeah. the Where's the calendar? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't drive on Luna Lila Home Road that day because <laughs> <laughs> it's all mapped out for the for the parade. Uh, there's lots of parking peripheral around there, and uh, the, the the parade begins at Kamiluiki School Field and goes down uh, Luna Lilo Home Road and ends at the Coca Marina Shopping Center. Any floats that are going to be different or the same or what, what I'm not if sure you exactly, describe it? Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening this year. We have bands and, and, and all the local community groups that come out, the scouts and, and you know. Are you coming? I understand you have a room for one segue only. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I can get Sam in there. <laughs> Sam Sloan walks and I segue to keep him straight. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in the old days, we used to throw a candy. Then you guys, I think because of the safety yeah. mindedness right. of it, the yeah. lion said or somebody said, hey guys, no more candy. No, we have yeah. candy at the end. Okay, so, and, and luckily, because before the people were going by and they were throwing right, candy out and we would do that and then that was the incentive concern. for the Some kids. Some of the children were running out and there were trucks and floats and things like that. Oh. So. Okay. So we want to keep the kids on the on the. So that's why there's the no side. candy. Well, there is candy, but it's at the end. Santa comes at the very end, and then there's candy there. And oh, you mean the last? Up. Right. Yes. I thought it was Uncle Sam who was last. Sam, no, Uncle Sam's, Sam's first. Oh, Uncle Sam's, Sam's first. Uncle yeah. Sam Sam first. Santa Claus is last. Okay, you yeah. guys got he, bring, he brings up the rear. <laughs> yeah, if Santa Claus came first, then the parade would be over in five minutes. Everybody right. would leave. Can they patent this, Peggy? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Any closing comments or messages to the community or anything uh, any of you would like Gene, to add? actually, I would like to add about the Leo Clubs because oh, right. we. Um, Leo people Clubs, don't hear about we them. haven't talked about that. Yeah. Leo Clubs are um, volunteer organizations in the high schools. And okay. they, they have a liaison who works with 
from the lines who works with the, an advisor. And for example, for us, Gordon Iwasaki Chun, he's the fac faculty advisor at Kaiser School, and he supervises and works with us. And when we have events such as when we go to the Great Aloha Run, we hand out t-shirts. The Leo Club kids come and they help out there. Mm -hmm. When we're washing um, glasses, they come in and they help do that. So it's a great opportunity for the young people as well. You know, these days we talk about young people maybe not, you know, just always doing their own thing, but the Leo clubs are great. And I encourage people if they've got children in yeah. the high school, mm -hmm. join a Leo club because you can do a lot of volunteer work. As for you from Kaiser, Leo club, great opportunity <laughs> to become then later right. a lion. Yes. Right, and, and it's I a great opportunity for the, for the kids to get leadership skills and, um, you know, in, interpersonal skills uh, and at a young age. And last the, year we just formed our first campus club with the University of Hawaii. Hawaii. Right. Yeah. Scott, 30 seconds, closing comment, anything? Uh, HawaiiKaiLions.org gives you all the information about the club, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, if you, you're always welcome to come and check out one of our meetings or come to one of our projects. Open right. for membership, and yes. you want to get more women in. These more women, right? families, the, the, and I'm on the membership are, committee, are so get in touch with me. Oh, we, okay, yeah. we're interviewing the right people, <laughs> the president, the membership committee, and the past president. Right, right, yeah. Uh, Tom, anything as uh, president of the Hawaii Kai Lions Club that do you want to Close wrap up. I just like you want to do the pledge again, or <laughs> <laughs> I just like to echo what, what Peggy said about the community supporting us. You know, we we uh, you know volunteer and try to help out the community, but we cannot do the things that we do without the community supporting us. And so it's a it's a real uh, uh, you know two way relationship, and we really appreciate their support. It's great to you know have everybody at the breakfast coming by and enjoying themselves and helping support us. And that's our single fundraising project for the entire year. And then that sets our budget, and then from there, everything comes right back into the community again. So the, the community is helping in a variety of ways when they support our breakfast. Well, I think if there's any group that's trusted, respected, and honored in the community, it's you. And it's been a great honor to have you on A Word with Ward. And for those of you who want to get involved in Lions, you know they're open for membership. And this is the group you're going to see shortly at the Huaikai Christmas Parade and to greatly enjoy the Father's Pancake Breakfast. Thanks for viewing. This is Representative Gene Ward, a word with Ward. Until the next time, aloha. 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 <laughs>